you guys so i thought i was recording apparently not <clears throat> basically what you see here is spiralized zucchini i bought this spiralizer from walmart if i can find it i will put it in the link um i think it was five or six dollars and i will say this be very careful the very first time i used this as i was twisting i went too far there is a jagged piece right there that little silver piece that my thumb caught and it was excruciating painful so uh that is the only drawback to i think the design i wish that it could have been some way where they didn't have that like <clears throat> right there but now i just stopped way way ahead to keep from a repeat to keep a repeat from happening okay and i make sure it's snapped all the way down too that's the other key to this the core is completely completely edible you do not have to throw that away it won't look as nice and uniform as the rest but i mean you most certainly can just throw it in there Uh oh, y'all can see I'm getting nervous now just thinking about it. But I am going to stop here. If anybody else has a tip on how they get their zucchini spiralizer all the way down in there, let me know. But as y'all can see, here are the teeth on this thing. And the tooth literally is exposed at the very top along with that blade. So your thumb has, you know, your thumb can really access that. Um, if you're not careful. So now that I spir spiralized this, we're going to go back to the stove. Our water is boiling and we're li literally just going to parch, blanch, excuse me. We're going to blanch this for like a minute, if that, okay? I'm going to rinse this off in cold water, drain them, and I will be meet you guys back over at the counter. Okay guys, so basically all that I'm doing literally was um, getting excess water out of the zucchini by just pressing down on it. I put a towel on the, underneath the bottom to absorb more of the water. And it's a lot, trust me, it's a lot of water. But I think we've gotten the majority of the water and you have basically like a noodle so i'm gonna add some of my tomato meat sauce to this um i'm not going to show you guys a full tutorial on how i did it because you guys have seen it before and um and you probably know how to make your own i'm also going to get some of this mozzarella cheese i wish i had gotten some ricotta cheese but i didn't so we're gonna have to do our little bake without it And I'm gonna fill these with some sauce. As a matter of fact, well, yeah, I'm gonna fill these with some sauce on the bottom. Oh no! Make a mess. It shouldn't really be a lot of sauce. Now I'm going to get sauce and add it to the mixture itself to these zucchini noodles. You want to stir this up instead make sure we're getting in between the noodles because i literally packed them all into like one big knot so
use your fork best you can. It's like a little knife. Separate these things. And that also just goes to show that even though we did give them a quick blanch, they are not super soft. So even just now, I could not easily just split them apart, okay? So hopefully that gives you an idea of the texture. And then we have our meat down in there. It's here. Heat sauce. I take some of this whole milk mozzarella cheese and we're going to go ahead and just put it over our, into our zucchini and meat sauce. You can put as little or as, or as much as you like. And you're not baking this for very long about 10 to 15 minutes on 375 degrees because everything is already cooked. You are simply wanting to get your cheese bubbled and browned and that's it. So I'll see you guys as soon as these bad boys come out of the oven. I'll let you know exactly how long they cook for. It's 6 o'clock p.m. right now. So that gives us a perfect start time. Okay, y'all. So it is 612. 12. We baked at 375 and then we broiled for a few minutes thereafter. Okay. Um, I just kind of want to give you guys a closer shot. Oof. Look at that. Look at that. Your own little personal baked spaghetti with zucchini. Uh, keto style or low carb friendly. Let me say that low carb friendly <laughs> because of course um, a lot of people are not keto. A lot of people are doing low carb or are just looking for low carb or low carb options. And some people are on keto, um, such as myself. But more so, I'm at a crossroad. I'm at a crossroad. I am. I am looking at my options right now as far as what I want to do. I am at a steady weight of about 140 pounds. I've been this weight for a good month, well, a good couple of months, simply because I have actively stopped trying to lose. I find that if I incorporate intermittent fasting, I am going to lose weight no matter what I do. Um, and I just didn't want to get any smaller. So I'm at a standstill with myself. I'm very happy, you know, overall, but I am in a transition period and hopefully I'll have an update on where I am with my keto journey or low carb or paleo, or whatever it's gonna be, I'll let you all know. Here's the meal and um, as always, thank you all so much for watching and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Have a good night. All right guys, so y'all know, it actually wouldn't be right if I didn't try this. <sighs> if we didn't give this a shot on can camera. Look at that. That's the bell pepper from my meat sauce. Just look how cheesy that is. Y'all see how cheesy and delicious that baked zucchini spaghetti is? Mmm. Mmm. -mm. Mm. That is so good. And it still has like a really nice crunch to the pasta, they're not like completely soggy. And also, as you notice, our sauce isn't soggy. No runny sauce, no runny liquid from dealing with zucchini. So I would say this is a winner winner. <laughs> again, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Good night again. <laughs>